Hello everyone and welcome back to DC Central, my name is Deck, and I wanted to jump on camera a little bit before we dive into the review of today's episode of The Flash, which is of course the first episode of season 9, the final season. Um, I wanted to just quickly jump on camera just to discuss a couple of things with you before we dive into the review. Uh, first of all, once again, I apologise for being gone for so long. Um, I officially plan to make this the end of my sort of breaks. Um, I am coming back to review this final season. Um, I want to be here in the discussion for this final season, um, so you can expect reviews for all 13 episodes of The Flash Season 9 on this channel. Um, and then once The Flash ends, um, I'm currently coming up with different ideas for what I want to do um, with this channel going forward um, in regards to the type of content and also presentation-wise. Um, you know, I'm still debating whether to keep things you know, purely audio based, um, as I have done for years, um, or do I move over to on camera stuff like this? Um, whatever you think, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. At the end of the day, it's you guys who are going to be watching my videos, so let me know. Would you prefer my more traditional style content where I just talk into the microphone, or would you prefer more on camera stuff? Just let me know your thoughts. Um, also, in regards to the type of content I'm going to be doing post the flash, um, I've got a couple of different ideas. My main ones are um, just focusing more on sort of general comic book media content, like more just general Marvel DC stuff, um, and also just any shows that I'm interested in, really. Um, so, you know, for example, besides all the Marvel and DC stuff, I'd also maybe be talking about shows like The Boys, The Last of Us, stuff like that. Um, potentially as well, this could be become this could become more of a home for my podcasts and my sh um, live streams. Um, or additionally, uh, I'm also considering maybe turning this into more of a gaming focused channel um, as gaming is a huge passion of mine and it's something that I always want to talk about. Um, so I might turn it into a gaming channel. Um, but I also want to get your guys input as well. What sort of content would you guys like to see? If you head over to my community page on this channel, I have got a poll on there um, which has got all the options I just listed. So you can go ahead and vote um, for which one you think uh, would be the best for me to do. Um, obviously it's down to me at the end of the day but I just want to get an idea of you guys about how you're feeling about the channel and where you would like it to go going forward um, once The Flash does reach its conclusion but anyway I just wanted to get on camera and talk about that before we dive into the review um, so welcome back I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you enjoyed the episode and let's dive in hey there guys and welcome back to DC Central and in today's video I'm going to be reviewing the first episode of The Flash Season 9, otherwise known as the final season of The Flash, otherwise entitled Wednesday Ever After. Uh, make sure you leave your own thoughts on this episode in the comment section down below. Do you think it was a good premiere, and are you excited for the rest of the season? Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section below. So yeah, this is the final season. We are finally here. It's beginning. Um, not only is this the end of The Flash, but this is the end of the Arrowverse, as we all know. Um, and this was weird to think about like this is a weird feeling to kind of go into you know knowing this is the last season um but as i mentioned in my little intro bit i want to be here i want to be in the discussion for this final season i am planning on reviewing all 13 episodes of this season uh so make sure you stay tuned for all that um so with all that said not out of the way let's dive into the first episode of the flash season nine so the episode starts out with the action sequence with all of Team Flash taking on this lava based meta who I believe is called Lava Pip, I could be wrong. Um, and this was a weird sequence like that instantly set off, you know, that something wasn't quite right because we see Frost there and obviously Frost having died at the end of season 8, we obviously, why would she be there? Um, but it was kind of cool to have a scene with all the Team Flash there, you know, using all their different abilities and stuff like that, including Cecile and Allegra. They were both there as well using their powers. So it was a cool little opening sequence, but it was very obvious from the offset that something isn't quite right here, just from the appearance of Frost. And this eventually results in Barry waking up having a nightmare after all of his loved ones and members of Team Flash get taken away in this kind of red lightning thing. However, it is then revealed that it has been around about seven weeks since the end of The Flash Season 8, and Barry and Iris has kind of been almost on like a sabbatical, um, still being at home in Central City, but taking a break from everything, and things have kind of been all good. Um, but this nightmare has kind of put Barry into a perspective of perhaps something might be coming. Now, Cecile uh, is trying to learn her new powers in this episode. She's trying to get a grip on her new powers, which... Um, 
is basically telekinesis. She has got telekinesis, so she's trying to throw these footballs to retire um, with the help of Joe and also the help of Chester. Um, now, this scene was fine, but it does pose kind of this interesting start to a question, which is that Cecile can sense that Joe is feeling unsure about this and isn't feeling the most positive about these developments of her new powers. Um, and he's trying to kind of process it and she's trying to understand exactly what his problem is, but we don't find that out until later on, so we'll get back to that. Um, but I think that the kind of opening of this episode was kind of reacclimating us to each of the characters as to where they are, what their status is right now, and I think that was an okay way to start the episode. We then head over to CCC Media and meet up with Iris and Allegra. Um, and this is where Allegra actually says something pretty interesting, which is that um, while Iris has been gone, uh, Cat Grant, of course the leader of Catco and famous Supergirl character, um, has offered to buy CCC Media and make it a part of their empire and expand it um, with a blank check. Um, and this is kind of like the start of this other part of the episode, but kind of interesting that we did get like a Supergirl reference, you know, and a Cat Grant reference. I thought that was really cool because again, it's just fun as part of the Arrowverse to have these references to the other shows, uh, especially now that Supergirl has ended. So the fact that obviously Catco is still there, it's still this big media mogul and Cat Grant is still this big prominent figure within it um, is really cool. Um, so I enjoyed that. It was just kind of nice to have that reference and that connectivity to the other part of the world. And with Iris and her business potentially getting an upgrade, so is maybe Barry. Um, Barry goes to um, the captain of the uh, Central City Police Department, and um, I actually can't remember her name now off the top of my head. It's been that so it's been that long, uh, but goes to the captain and basically uh, puts his um, application in for the director of police, um, which is then greeted by the response of, "Oh, I was going to put you in for it anyway." Um, so it seems like, you know, Barry is going to be getting a promotion at the end of this season and perhaps that's going to be his new job going forward. Rather than being a CSI, he's going to become the director of police, which I think is really cool. Um, you know, the fact that he's going to be director on like the normal police side, but he's also going to be able to be the Flash. You know, that's of course if he doesn't die at the end of the season. I don't think he is going to kill the Flash. Like, I don't think the Flash is going to die at the end of this. I think he's very much going to be alive. Um, so I think it's kind of cool that he's going to get this kind of very big authoritarian job within the police department because he's been so well entrenched with them for so long. However, we then move into our first major action sequence of this episode, which is to do with a new rogue um, who is being introduced in this episode, and that is the new Captain Boomerang. Um, now, of course, this is the sort of Owen Mercer version, which is the version from the comics, I believe. Um, but this is a different version of Captain Boomerang to what we've had in the Arrowverse in the past. Of course, we did have that other version um, that was mainly on Arrow, um, but we have this new version, and it makes sense for him to be on the Flash. Like, he is a Flash villain. Um, but I have to say, this was a really awesome sequence because what I liked about it is it really showed how much the production quality of this season has been stepped up. Um, they have done the thing that Superman and Lois and Batwoman have done, where they've kind of added in the cinematic black bars, which... To be honest, I wasn't sure I feel about it, but on The Flash, I actually think it does work. It makes this episode and, you know, the rest of this season feel a lot more cinematic than what it has done in previous seasons. So I really enjoyed that. Also, the CGI is a lot stronger in this as well. Um, like, the actual effects on the boomerangs themselves were really great. So I feel like the production quality in general, you know, this has got a reduced episode count this season to what we're used to. You know, we're normally used to you know 20 plus episodes a season whereas this has gone down to 13 and i think on that reduced episode count they've been able to use the additional money from that budget to really uh, enhance these special effects for this final season which i think was a really smart decision because it looks great it presents itself really well and again comes across just really cinematic which sometimes the cw shows have had trouble with in the past and that's often what has led to mockery online and things like that but i feel like there's no room for mockery in this opening episode when it comes to the effects like they are really strong and also um captain boomerang uh, this version of him can teleport which i think is cool it kind of adds a new element to him and differentiates him from the uh, previous version we had who was basically just a mercenary who threw who threw boomerangs this version can actually teleport which does um, it makes him similar as well to the version we're gonna get um in the rocksteady game uh, suicide squad killed the justice league he he can do that as well um so i think that's a cool little link there Anyway, after all of this, Barry goes home with Iris and he presents to her a map book. Um, this is something that he has created, um, which basically maps out 
the rest of his future with Iris. Um, which is a little bit weird and a little bit almost stalkery and toxic to be honest, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll let that slide. Um, I was actually a little confused by this map book initially. I don't know if this was mentioned in the episode, but I didn't actually understand where it came from. Like, I knew he made it, but I was like, where did the, you know, where did all the information come from? Um, but from, as I understand it, it was created as, you know, his experience in the future and also, um, you know, so every, all of his knowledge he's kind of attained from time traveling, but also from Gideon. Um, so he kind of uses this book as like, the guide to his life saying you know we have to follow this book completely because if we follow it completely then our lives will be good and we'll always be together and this that and the other and this presents a bit of drama between him and iris which to be honest i'm completely on iris's side in this like her being like i'm not being a slave to this book that you've created it's weird um it is completely weird like this is very i, I actually found this a bit out of character for barry i mean i understand it from the perspective of oh i want to create a life for us where we're always together and we never have to face any of these problems and we always know what's coming and blah 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 blah. but at the same time you are literally taking away free will and iris does say that you know you're literally robbing us of free will um which i think was an interesting dilemma and it actually created some really good development between barry and iris which we haven't had for a long time um you know they've kind of been very much okay for a long time so to give them this actual sense of uh, confrontation and conflict I thought was really well done um, like I say maybe a little out of character for Barry but maybe that's what they needed to kind of just give us a little bit of drama and a little bit of development between the two however this does then actually provide us with our actual main conflict for this episode which is a time loop now when I found out that in the episode that this was going to be a time loop episode I did roll my eyes I'm not gonna lie um, just because the Arrowverse and the Flash in particular has been so many time loop episodes, I was just like, I don't need another one, especially in this final season, like, why are we clogging up with time loops? And while I could have done without a time loop, I will say, I liked the way the episode did it because they really leaned into the comedy angle, which they haven't done previously, like, the actual kind of humour of it was played into, which I did enjoy, because normally the time loops are done quite stressfully, and, you know, normally it's always, oh, we've got to find a way out, um, but with this... You know, the way Barry and Chester were kind of working on the thing to break them out and it kept going wrong was really funny. And also Iris just being like getting wasted every day was, was, was funny. Um, so I did enjoy that. Um, like I say, probably could have done without a time loop episode, to be honest, but this was probably the most entertaining way they could have gone about it. Now, going back to Captain Boomerang, once they figure out how to break the loop, um, we then go back to Captain Boomerang, um, and basically the way they were able to break the loop was Barry and Iris had to do everything together, basically. Um, and Captain Boomerang reveals, oh hey, I've actually got a backup plan, I've got a nuke. Um, <laughs> which definitely came out of left field, but hey hey. Um, and Barry then reveals the new sort of power he has. Uh, not new power as such, but he is essentially able to phase through a nuclear blast and thus make the blast itself phase through everything else. So the nuke is unable to be stopped. He has to let it explode. But using his phasing ability, he's able to literally make the blast, you know, the nuclear energy phase itself. So it literally phases through the entirety of the city. So no damage is done, which is pretty OP. Uh, that is pretty powerful. I mean, the Flash has done some powerful stuff in the past and you know, when you look at like flash time and stuff like that, but this is insane. Like he's actually basically able to stop a nuke, um, which we have seen in the Arrowverse before, like Ragman did it back in Arrow season five. And that's why he got written out of the show because he was just too powerful. Um, you can get away with it a bit more on the flash because this is a more of a super powered show, whereas Arrow was meant to be a lot more grounded. Um, but this was a pretty cool scene though, in fairness. And um, when the nuke is eventually stopped, we do actually, finally i guess get the kiss between allegra and chester which obviously some people i know a lot of people are going to moan at this and just be like oh i can't believe they're doing this another relationship on the show and it's one that nobody likes and i get it like you know these characters i feel like they have been put into a relationship kind of forcefully and it didn't feel like the most natural progression but whatever i thought to be honest i thought in terms of like the timing of it and the scene it worked well um like i say i'm not the biggest lover of this couple but Let's see how they go with it. Now, going back to the Joe and Cecile thing, um, 
Joe eventually does reveal that he wants to leave Central City. Now, this is mainly a uh, real-life workaround because if you are unaware, Jesse L. Martin, who plays Joe, uh, is only going to be in about five or six episodes of this season. Um, and that is because Jesse L. Martin has actually become a lead role on another show. Um, just because obviously he was looking for work for when The Flash ends and he kind of got that work earlier than expected. So unfortunately that means that Joe is not going to be a part of this season as much as he has been in previous. Which is very very sad because I love Jesse. He's such a great and integral part of this show. Like I adore him. So the fact he's not going to be as big of a part of the final season is a shame. Um, but I do wonder what this means for Cecile because... If you notice in the credits of this episode, Jesse L. Martin is listed as a special guest star, um, whereas Cecile is a series regular. So, does that mean Cecile stays and Joe leaves? Because if that's the case, I think that's very bizarre. Um, them two being a couple who are like, they're almost like a ride or die, and they also have a kid together. It's kind of weird if Joe leaves. Like, does he take Jenna with him as well? Like, baby Jenna, does she leave with him? Um, and then does Cecile just stay to be a hero? Because if that happens, I do not buy that for one minute. Um, and like I say, I know it's difficult because like I say, this is more of a real life workaround than a story workaround because um, Jesse L. Martin just wasn't as available. Um, so I get that, but I feel like if that is what happens, they could have come up with something better and maybe, maybe Cecile should have gone as well. Now, we've sort of got two stingers at the end of this episode, two little teasers for what's to come. The first one is Barry gets a alert on his phone, uh, which is revealed to be from Caitlyn. Now, of course, this is weird. As I said at the beginning, Caitlyn slash Frost is gone. Um, so this was a little bit strange, but Barry goes to Star Labs and finds what appears to be Caitlyn stood there. And she turns around and... It is Danielle Panabaker. Like this is this is a character played by Danielle Panabaker. Um, however, she claims that she's not Caitlyn, nor is she Frost. Um, but we don't get a name. We don't get a name for this character. So it essentially leaves on a cliffhanger of Danielle Panabaker is in this season. She's back, but she's playing a completely new character. Now I have no idea who this character is. I don't have any indication as to what kind of character she's going to be playing. Does she have powers? Is it Frost? Is it some form of Caitlyn? I have no idea. Um, she does look like a bit of a... She looks closer to Caitlyn than Frost. Like, she definitely looks more, like, human. Um, but she does have these kind of blue highlights in her hair, which does kind of indicate that perhaps there's some element of Frost in there. Um, so, who knows what this is. Um, we do know that Mark Chilblain is going to be a part of the season as well, so I'm sure that he's going to link up with her, and that storyline will explore it more. But I am interested, but I'm also happy because I love Danielle Panabaker. She's such a great part of this show. Um, you know, she's been there since the beginning. So to have her in this final season, it is needed, it is warranted, and I'm glad to have her back. I'm just interested to see what they do with her. And the final stinger for the episode is Captain Boomerang going back to this warehouse to deliver the device to the, his boss. And in exchange for the device, he gets some new boomerangs, which is cool. But we do officially get a look at who he is working for, and that is the Red Death. Now, I'm not going to go too much into the Red Death because I've spoken about Red Death before and I'm sure most of you watching are fully aware of who the Red Death is. Um, but just to quickly run down, if you don't know, um, it's basically a version of the Flash, or actually it's a version of Batman uh, in the comics who has the Flash's abilities and is evil, basically. Um, now, we have known based on set photos that the Red Death was going to be a part of this season early on and I'm very excited to see what they do with this character. You know, they've been teased since season 5. Um, so to finally get this character in season 9, I'm very excited. And I love what they're doing with it. You know, the fact this is going to be Ryan Wilder, um, Batwoman, as the Red Death is awesome. Because we knew it was never going to be Bruce Wayne or Batman. Like, they can't do that. But I think the fact they have Batwoman in this universe is also going to add some closure to Batwoman as a show as well. Which I think is vastly needed after it was cancelled. So I'm super excited to see the Red Death. This is such a great character. Like I said, they've teased the Red Death since season 5. So the fact we're finally getting it now, I can't wait to see it. Um, or see her like I say we know it's Ryan Wilder so that's really cool um, I just can't wait to see it so overall I thought this episode was actually kind of weird um, it didn't really feel like a season premiere um, I saw um, Pagey you know he, he said in his review that this episode kind of felt like a mid-season premiere and that's kind of the perfect way to sum it up like you know he did it better than I could it's a really strange episode that feels like it's almost something you get in the middle of the season not a premiere um, like I say, doing a time loop episode is kind of what these shows have done previously as a filler episode. So again, to get that as the season opener, I thought was strange. 
but it does have some strong points. Like I say, I really enjoy seeing the production quality of the show step up for this final season. I think it adds a lot to it. Um, it does set up some interesting storylines. Like I say, Joe potentially leaving, um, Caitlin and the Frost thing, like what's going on with that. And of course, the tease of Red Death at the end uh, is very, very exciting. So overall, I enjoyed the episode. I had a good time with it, but like I say, it was a bit of a weird one to open the season. I think that they could have done this maybe as episode two or three. So thank you guys for watching my episode review of The Flash Season 9, Episode 1. Make sure you leave your own thoughts on the episode in the comment section down below. And if you want to see more reviews like this on The Flash every single week, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any uploads from me. And I hope to see you guys again next time.